Thank you. And good afternoon, everybody. No? No. So, uh, yeah. Uh, we will be presenting your uh, GOS3 project and we're talking about uh, LGC APIs. But I would like to start from a little bit uh, after way. So, we, you probably need some, uh, some exercising uh, after the lunch break. So. Please raise your hand to uh, who have used this uh, OGC web services like web app service or web feature service. Or, uh, yeah, thank you. It's, it's what, 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 I, what I expected. It's uh, more or less all, all of us are using the services. But do you, do you know that the lifespan of this uh, web services, the standards are reaching to an end? And, and for uh, like GIS users, it's not maybe. Uh, Maybe something to, to worry about, but I don't know if you have many developers in this room. But if you are a de developer, you know that these standards are from uh, last century. This is technology uh, is from uh, last century, uh, so it's uh, quite a hard to integrate this uh, modern uh, web frameworks. And uh, modern uh, developers don't, don't like these standards. It's not easy to work with. But fortunately, uh, we should see. Open Geospatial Spatial Consortium is already working for some time to produce new set of standards that are modern APIs, RESTful services, well, nice and shiny. But uh, please raise your hand if uh, anybody of you have used like uh, OGC APIs, like API, feature API, for example. That's okay, quite, quite, quite many, so maybe I can uh, cover cover it more quickly, but uh, all of you who haven't yet used it, so you listen carefully and, and please visit this OGC web page and later on we, uh, we will show you a nice, uh, a nice resource about this uh, Location Innovation Academy where you can uh, learn about this uh, new APIs because this is a future for all of us. Uh, and uh, since the main, uh, main point about this uh, new APIs is about uh, compatibility and uh, interoperability between uh, geospatial APIs and uh, like these normal and non-spatial APIs, because these are all restful services or, or APIs. And uh, here is a selection of uh, these this new standards. Not, not all of them fit into, into one slide. Uh, but uh, you, you can immediately understand that like, uh, we had, uh, or we, we have uh, currently the coverage service, uh, now it's uh, coverage API and uh, feature API is more, more or less uh, the feature service. But of course, uh, there are uh, some, uh, some new things like uh, API for routing or API for moving objects. And an important thing is uh, all of these uh, standards are, are not all, but many of these standards are still in development. So only a handful are fully a growth state, but uh, it shouldn't stop you if you want to use them. For example, in GOS3 project, we have used this uh, joints API quite successfully to join uh, some statistical data uh, to uh, the polygons of administrative units. Uh, but it is not, not, uh, not uh, approved standard, but it, it works. And if you are wondering how, uh, how this new thing uh, looks like from uh, from user perspective, this is a, like an API application programming interface. If you have used, uh, if you have used some uh, REST services, you, it's, it's very, very, very familiar to you. It's uh, like uh, have a landing page, or uh, this is a uh, point that you can give to your users. And on the landing page, there are some mandatory parts, like conformance uh, declaration and, and the API declaration. All of these APIs are open, open API compatible, so it's uh, very easy to use them. And, uh, and then there are different uh, parts for different like, like standards. Uh, and of course, you can use, uh, use the same landing page uh, to serve, for example, record data as a feature API and the same data set as, uh, as an app API, for example. So it's very, very nice uh, 
I would not say simple, but uh, for developers it's much simpler than the current system. You don't have to process uh, like uh, XML or, or do some kind of these funny things. That you have to do with these web, web services. Uh, and uh, this, this, this image uh, shows you about uh, how this landing page uh, looks like. Uh, usually uh, all of these uh, services uh, provide uh, provides information in a human readable form in HTML. But like, like you see, you can, uh, you can click all of these links. If you are a developer, you can, uh, you, you can see what, which, which URL you, can, you have to put into your application, for example. And uh, at the same time, this information is provided as a machine uh, readable JSON. So it's uh, both words. But maybe, maybe you are wondering if you are just a, like a GS specialist, not a developer, it's how it helps you. It's, the easy answer is there is already software. This is not an exhaustive list. It's just uh, some, some pieces of software that I, I have been working with. But it, it already works. Not all of this uh, software supports all of these different APIs yet. And uh, one big problem currently is that uh, not very many datasets are available to it using these new APIs, and this is exactly the point to, uh, why did we do this uh, Geo E3 uh, project. And uh, the, the Geo E3 stands for uh, Geospatial Enabled Ecosystem for Europe. It's uh, like an international cooperation uh, project, uh, which is very much about uh, improving the interoperability and especially using and promoting uh, these new uh, OGC APIs, different APIs. And uh, to, 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 to promote the APIs, it's, uh, the best thing is to, to show how you can use the data. So we have uh, put together uh, different uh, national data sets, not some uh, testing data, but the real national data sets. And we have published it uh, through our uh, data platform. So this is open data, it's available to everybody, and it provides uh, like a uniform access point to this data. And uh, I have written on the slides that this, uh, this data platform does uh, dynamic harmonization, and this is about, uh, we have data sets from different countries, but uh, not, not all of the countries uh, supply data are using uh, OGC like API features. Some of them are using this other web uh, feature service, uh, but uh, this dynamic harmonization does, does it dynamically for you, so if, if you access our data portal, you can access it uh, using this only this uh, new uh, each API. And uh, you can see here in the uh, down there that uh, which uh, data sets are available currently, like, like buildings, roads, uh, terrain, there are, there are quite, quite, uh, quite a lot of different data. And another uh, very important uh, result from our project is the Location Innovation Academy, but uh, we will return to it uh, later. Now, now, like a slide of sponsors. <laughs> Actually, this, uh, this project is partly funded uh, from the uh, European Union, uh, but uh, we have uh, Many, many partners from different countries. The leading partner is uh, Finnish National Landing, uh, um, National Land Survey, uh, but we have uh, partners from public sector, also from private sector, from Finland, Estonia, Netherlands, Norway, uh, Spain, and we also have uh, Open Source Spatial Consortium on board. So it's a lot of partners. Uh, you, you can find data sets from all of these countries uh, in our data platform. Uh, but actually, this data platform is not limited to our project partners. We also have data from Slovakia. There are data from France and uh, Germany is uh, like in testing, testing phase, and we, we also publish it quite soon. And if there is, if there is somebody from like Latvia and Lithuania who, who, uh, who can give us uh, the national data sets, so we, we are very pleased to include also your data on our data platform. Uh, but uh, this is based on itself, it's not, well, we, 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 have, we, are, we want to promote this new APIs, we provide the data, but we kind of like want or need to persuade uh, the, the actual users that it's, it's worthwhile to use this data. 
Uh, so we have uh, made up uh, some uh, some use cases, which we also have uh, researched a, a little bit, uh, not very, very 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 deeply in our, our project. But for example, uh, the first use case is about uh, the energy efficiency of buildings. Uh, we would use these uh, APIs uh, or three-dimensional building uh, models, also uh, the climate data about temperature and. Uh, and some other parts to, to do some uh, like like a use case. It's 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 like eating your own uh, dog food. It's, uh, how how usable is the data? Another use case about make, making our city smarter. There are a lot of, a lot of possibilities also to, to use uh, this uh, unified APIs for for smart cities for smart cities. And, uh, and and also uh, like uh, for more safer uh, driving or or, or uh, especially for electrical vehicles uh, or the battery uh, charts uh, how much uh, is, is it left if you are driving in a, in a mountains uh, maybe with some uh, windy conditions uh, some some ice on road so it's uh, another uh, use case. And of course, you can uh, look into our web page for much more information. Because now it's time for uh, Location Innovation Academy, and I will pass on my microphone to Arko, and he will uh, tell you what, what is it about and how you can benefit from this academy. So please. Thank you. And hello, I'm Alvo. I'm from the National Answer Web Finland. And now you have heard about OTC APIs and international interoperability. And now I'm going to tell you some uh, ways to achieve this interoperability, to learn, uh, ways to learn more about OTC APIs. So our project has two main outcomes, the data integration platform that Anna mentioned, and also the Location Innovation Academy, and basically the academy is an uh, online e-learning platform that has three different courses about uh, data management, service management, management and data and service integration. And those uh, course names are not maybe uh, very descriptive because we make them afterwards based on our modules. But for modules, supports, modern and cross-border management, integration, processing, and sharing of geospace data and services. So basically everything that I'm not talking about. And there are, are all the modules. So three courses have each. Each of them has three to five modules about open data licenses, semantic interoperability, quality, Metadata and OCC API standard modules, which are written by me. So, yeah, I recommend them. <laughs> and also, we have uh, three modules about data integration. And as you can see, almost all modules have been written by international experts from different countries, from Spain, Netherlands, Estonia, Germany. Norway and Spain, if I mentioned all of them, and also Finland. And now I focus mainly on the service management course about OCC APIs. So the course covers all fundamental concepts and resources and principles of standards. And if you log into that academy and Check this course, you maybe understand what are OCC APIs and why we use them, and, and also the course uh, introduces OCC APIs one by one from OCC API features to OCC API types and the course and environmental data retrieval and joins and all the APIs that have been uh, published as a standard. And also the OCC API common which creates a basis for all of them. And maybe the most important thing is that there is one uh, 
example uh, implementation which uses PyGeo API Python library. So after that course, you can create your own API and use it and share data. And as you may be understood from the modules, that our course is mainly targeted for the people who work in uh, national mapping or cadastral agencies or other organizations that produce or integrate or publish geofessal data. So the modules don't have any information about data analysis or visualization or, or things like that. So it's the beginning of the data life cycle before uh, using that data as an end user. And the skill level of the modules varies a lot. There are some modules more suitable for beginners and other are for very uh, maybe technical experts who want to understand, for example, metadata better or standards or whatever you need to make, create all city APIs or interoperability uh, between countries. And then I have, I have, I have listed some uh, benefits why you should uh, study our courses. So all courses are free, you don't have to pay anything, and we are updating the modules all the time. And at this point, we don't have any recognable tests or assignments, but uh, most probably we will add something to uh, create some interaction and motivation for people to study instead of just. Uh, at the moment, there are a lot of videos and images and text about those topics, but not uh, example, uh, exams yet. And of course, after completing, completing, you get nice certificate that you can prove that you are an expert of a certain topic. Uh, because it's online course, you can study it anywhere and anytime, whenever you want. And then there is a web address that you can log in, and there are instructions on the site. And Please give some feedback about, about the modules because uh, we are developing them and we want to uh, see how you manage to understand things and what was the difficult part and so on. And yeah, uh, in this year we will create a business plan, which means that the academy will be available also after the project. And after the project, the academy is hosted by Open Geospatial Consortium and Location Innovation Hub. And if you have some new ideas or feedback, please tell me or uh, go to the web page. There are some feedback forms. And lastly, I mentioned the Location Innovation Hub shortly. So this is maybe a bit a uh, marketing slide. But Location Innovation Hub is a project that aims to connect uh, private sector, public sector, and businesses and help them to create uh, new solutions and innovation using uh, location data and technology that our consortium provides. And also, Location Innovation Hub will create some uh, European data spaces, yeah. and there's one image about data spaces, and I'm not going to explain it, uh, what does it mean, but if you have heard that this uh, past term, maybe location innovation app could help you to make one of them. And that, that was all. Thank you. There are some links to the websites to data integration platform which demonstrates OCC APIs and also the link to the academy. And please log in, we need, still need a few hundred new students. <laughs> so thank you very much to uh, the gentleman from Estonia and Finland. Uh, at present, there are no questions on Slido, but I do have a question. You indicated you indicated that after this project, uh, 
the uh, Innovation Location Academy will go onwards and continue to live. How long is this project currently planned for? Um, the project will end in autumn, but we most likely will have uh, some extra time. So the next spring or okay. any of the project. So this fall, you'll actually be transitioning to uh, to ensure that the academy continues to be maintained and ongoing. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's very good. Are there any other questions from uh, the participants? Yes, sir, please. What is your favorite study module? I'll go. Mm. Okay, so all of them. So. Uh, of course, I recommend my modules because there are five, five of them. But mm, that's that's difficult. I also like uh, data integration modules. Well, they are very useful, and uh, especially the meteorological data integration module has a lot of uh, real life Python examples uh, of different APIs and datasets. Thank you. Just part of this for just a moment. There's a question uh, here in the back. Uh, do you want to ask the question? Yes, sir. Please. Uh, where we could expect the next uh, GeoGeo3 uh, conference in Estonia, for example, or in Finland? Mm -hmm. So when can we expect the next uh, Geo3 conference in Estonia or Finland or anywhere else? Please. Well, well this is. This. This project is uh, the Jury Three is a three-year project and it's approaching an end. So I think there will be not, not a big conference, but uh, of course we publish uh, the results at the end of the project. The results will be published at the end of the uh, project. There's one more question back here. Yeah. Hi. Uh, what format is the studies? Uh, how do they look like? Is it like video lectures, live uh, screen? Um, there are a lot of uh, real life examples about like Python scripts and uh, step by step instructions. Also, videos, uh, texts, uh, images, like all kinds of things that you can uh, use online. Thank you very much. It sounds to me like uh, many of us are eager to check out that link. As we uh, return in the, to our computers this afternoon, or maybe we're even doing that right now on our phone. So thank you for that valuable information. I think there are no more questions right now. So Hanna, also, thank you very much. <laughs>